One of the best traditions is Talladega sharing pictures of all the things that are left over in the campgrounds after the NASCAR races. So let's take a look at a few of the things that were left. So like I said, every year people leave some weird things in the campgrounds at Talladega. If you saw any of the photos this weekend or videos that came out, you know there's potentially some poles involved, the stage, clothes coming off, beads getting thrown. Things get weird in the infield and in the campgrounds at Talladega. So we're going to look through some of these photos real quick of things that got left behind. We're starting off hot here with a couch just positioned right in front of a porta potty. I'm thinking this is kind of like a weird version of Mystery Science Theater. Remember that guy that went viral a few years ago, the long neck kid and his big gigantic buddy? Yeah, they're sitting right there and then potentially just a drunk fan that stumbled over there probably has a three shaved into his chest hair. They're sitting there just commentating on whatever or whoever comes out of that porta potty right there. Probably not the best place for somebody to sit. One other thing I've discovered about Talladega is if you're looking to get rid of a couch, love seat, potentially an armchair, bring it to the Talladega infield. Because traditionally, if you're going to throw it away at your house, you either got to break it down, take it to a dump, potentially wrap it in cellophane, and then set it out for the trash and hope that your trash guy takes it. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Sometimes you have to call ahead, and that's just a real pain. But it's now Talladega's problem, because you can just drop it right here in the infield next to a porta potty and people might even be leaving the track going, ah. You know, honey, that would look pretty good out in the garage or out in the basement. And honestly, they look like they might have a few years and some other things left in them. So you can probably go look at that. I do like to envision if Charlie and Frank from Always Sunny ever went to a NASCAR race, this is what their sleeping arrangement would look like. A cot right next to a porta potty. Or better yet, which might actually be more fitting for them, is this disgusting mattress that is folded up right next to another porta potty. Why are all of these things positioned next to toilets? I don't understand. We're putting couches by toilets. We're putting beds by toilets. We're putting cots by toilets. Get away from the toilets, everybody. Stop putting things there. Unless, of course, like you have an emergency and you're like, I just need to st sleep right here because this is the closest and best thing that can be for me at the moment. But I assume Charlie and Frank would absolutely thrive in an environment like this. They're resourceful. They're animals. And they don't really need much to be content. And having a nice, what I assume is a moist disgusting mattress right next to a porta potty would be perfectly befitting of them. Talladega actually had a really funny comment on their own. These Florida Gator cornhole boards leaned up against a trash can or something along those natures. And they said, saw some trash. <laughs> we were all thinking it just said it. So yeah, I mean, obviously you're in Alabama, you got Florida there, you get it. The college rivalry goes along with it. We also have another picture and some things happen here. So in this photo, you can see a blow up doll face down on the ground, beads left in a chair, the toilet tent knocked over. I'm assuming somebody's girlfriend or wife came back earlier than they expected and things didn't go so well with the in total reaction. And that's what we have here. Bringing a blow up doll to the campground is a bizarre move in its own right. And also who's buying blow up dolls? I don't understand that. Unironically, you know what I'm getting at here. Don't love that. This picture of what appears to be a memory foam mattress or just a large piece of foam in general, this is how you get hepatitis. Do not lay on this at all. I, I can't stress enough that just for the sake of the CDC, we already went through a global shutdown. The next global shutdown might come off of that mattress. It looks soggy. It looks wet. It looks like if you touch it, you need to go get a tetanus shot immediately. And I know it has nothing to do with tetanus. I just want to get as much antibiotics in me as possible to stay away from that. So don't do that. We also have somebody, potentially somebody maybe named Randy, Rick, not a Philip, not a Paul, took the Pepperidge Farm display, product and all, out of probably a Piggly Wiggly, maybe like north of Gadsden or somewhere else in Alabama and brought it to the racetrack. Like I said, product and all, and there's still product left on it, which I'm baffled by. Why didn't anybody eat all this great Pepperidge Farm? Is anybody going to remember this? Pepperidge Farm remembers. Shout out to Family Guy. So yeah, there's a lot of things that get left behind in the infield. You also have this tiny little grill, which isn't that bad. Uh, a lot of trash, a lot of trash. But for the most part, this year was actually pretty tame in the grand scheme of things. Traditionally, you get left with a lot of things. However, there is still one thing that is missing. The guys over at Fast Car Living, as well as the guys at the left turn cult, were down in Alabama for the Talladega race. And they commented underneath this thread from Talladega. And they said, ellipses, dot, 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 they still haven't found the couch 
dot 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 and Talladega responded with what couch in bold or capital letters <laughs> to which the guys said search harder now we can't ruin the surprise you'll find it sooner or later where's the couch at is it in the trees did they bury it I'm very confused on where this potential couch is at. I hope it's like in a tree. And then this fall, go down there and just get out of the tree again. I think that's genius, honestly. Don't have to transport a couch back and forth. Although it might be weathered a little bit. Either way, what happened this year at Talladega was, again, pretty tame for the most part. Which is maybe a good thing. People are cleaning up after themselves. They're protecting the environment. Just, I'm joking there I don't think anybody that's going to this is an environmentalist but there have been some crazy things I'm excited to see for the Indianapolis 500 if you don't follow Indy 500 picks on Twitter absolutely should do that because it's generally just debauchery um, before and after the races because if you've been in the Indy 500 you know some people make it into the track some people never make it into the track and some people have a hard time getting out of the track my favorite thing with that is one year I was walking back to my car, Coclot. Shout out to Coclot. If you've ever been, you know what I'm talking about. And this man saw a trash can, and the trash can was full, and he needed to throw his trash away. So his logical drunk brain said, Well, we need to make room in this trash can right now. And instead of like trying to smash it down, he decided to pick the trash can up, dump it out, set the can back down, drop his trash into it, and then proudly walk away because he solved the problem. See a need, fill a need. The man saw a need to make more room. And he went ahead and just dumped it all out on the ground. But, hey, I can't fault the drunk logic behind that because he did throw his trash away. They told him to throw his trash away. They didn't tell him to throw other people's trash away. So I'm excited for that. I'm excited to get back to Talladega in the fall and see what happens there. Hopefully, we are in attendance for that one. But, yeah, let me know in the comments what's the weirdest thing you've seen left at Talladega or another racetrack for that matter. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.